Welcome to our Shepherd's Chapel Bible Study. It's so great that you could join us today. Please join us in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, hallowed be thy name. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of this day. We thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, our cups truly do runneth over, and we owe it all to you. You are doing so many things for us behind the scenes that we aren't even aware of. But Father, you make yourself aware very clearly to many of us. That's why we give you all glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for that. We also have these unspoken prayers before you at this time. You know every heart, every dream, every wish, every concern. And we thank you for not only hearing these prayers, but we thank you for always answering them in perfect season, perfect timing, Father, and we thank you for that. We also have before you, we pray for Jody, Faye, Kim, Damon, Janet, the Krofchik family, Holden family, Bernard, Shane on guidance, and Caleb. On all these, Father, we ask that you lead, that you guide, that you direct, that you touch, and that you heal. In Yeshua's precious holy name we pray. And we pray for all the families being affected by this world and what they're going through right now. And it is needless, Father. It's, it's not that we aren't corrected. But, Father, when we're not living your, through your word, your way, we're going to be corrected through your word and your way. And there are so many people today right now that are being corrected and they don't even know it. They are going through trials and tribulations, and they don't know why. But, Father, you just want the best for them. And a lot of people ask, Lord, well, why is it this way? Is because you want what is best for them, and you're going to do whatever it takes, short of making them. You're going to do whatever it takes to lead, guide, and direct them to your glory. And I pray that more and more people this day, and, this, and from this point forward, we'll see that and understand it and turn to you and accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And we pray for all those who have come and gone from our chapel, wherever they are, whatever they are doing. We pray, dear Lord, that they have not forsaken thy word and that they will return to the sheepfold soon. And we pray for Israel and for our nation, for thy kingdom to come. For thy will that will be done on this earth as it is in heaven, to which we say, Come, Lord, come. And we pray for those first responders that are on the front lines helping your children, as well as our military who are in arm's way, or who are about to go into arm's way, for their safety and speedy return home. And as always, Father, we pray for the lost, those that do not have an opportunity this day to receive thy truth. Now, Father, I pray that you open up our eyes that we may see. I pray that you open up our ears that we may hear thy words as it is written, as it will be you that speaks to us this day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. 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 I don't know what that noise was. Oh, okay. <clears throat> All right, getting back into our Father's Word today. We are beginning Psalms 17. And we have covered this before about David having the heart of God, where, where God loved David for who and what he was. Now, even, even in times of trouble and times of disobedience, God still loved David. He didn't like what he was doing, but he loved David because he knew David and that David would turn to our Father and repent and do what's right. And if you ever wondered why, how, how David got to, to this point of uh, our father loving him so much. Well, this Psalm 17 is really a psalm. It, it, it's, it's more of a prayer than a psalm. It's really called a prayer of David. So David uh, in, in Psalm 17 is going to be praying to our father. And uh, with that information, please join me in Psalm 17. Verse 1, with wisdom from our Heavenly Father, and it reads, Hear the right, O Lord, 
Attend unto my prayer. What does David mean here, the right? Listen to those that are doing it right. You know, uh, you say, well, why would David say something like that? Because David realizes now that there's good and bad in all of us, but there's also bad prayers. What do I mean by bad prayers? Selfish. Uh, selfish prayers, prideful prayers. Um, prayers that in anger. Now some some people say, well, wait a minute. Now isn't all prayers good? Well, uh, if you're praying for the wrong things, what would be a wrong prayer? Anybody? Praying Just, for your enemy to die, basically, <laughs> might be a bad prayer. Could go either way. Or pray for them to go to hell. Mm -hmm. You know, um, praying, praying a negative, mm -hmm. because prayer is supposed to be positive, isn't it? You know, you, in other words, it's supposed to be selfless. It's supposed to be uplifting and edifying. But sometimes we're not uplifted. You know, so when we pray, when we're not being uplifted. That, uh, we might start off as a negative, but that's when the Holy Spirit takes over. If we're in tune to our Father, and the Spirit, a lot of times, that's why it says in the Word that we will utter things that we don't even know what we're saying. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we, we don't comprehend it. That just means that, I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where things were going just just down a terrible path in life. Not necessarily me, but something I'm thinking about. And I just didn't know what to pray about. Now, how, I mean, how, what can I say, Lord? You know, this has been going on for generations, and, and now I see the turmoil and the hatred. And, the, and, and you know what I'm talking about? And, and, and you, you come to a point, you say, you know, Lord, I just don't know what to say anymore. Well, that's when the Spirit takes over, you know, because He knows a person's heart that they want to do what's right. So this is David saying unto the Lord, now hear me, Lord. Uh, listen to what he says here. Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry. Give ear unto my prayer. Listen to me. That goeth not out of faint lips. Now, notice this, that goeth, is it written in italics mm -hmm. in your Bible? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It was added? It was added in later. It wasn't in the manuscript. So, basically it says, according to the manuscripts, give ear unto my prayer, not out of feigned lips. In other words, not out of a deceitful heart. Don't listen. Don't listen to me. David's even saying, reading between the lines. If I if I'm doing this wrong, don't listen to it. You know, if I'm saying the wrong things, if I'm looking at the wrong, if I have the wrong attitude, don't listen to me. However, Lord, if I'm doing the right thing, if I'm if I'm saying the right words, if I'm having the right heart, listen to what I want to say because I want to pray to you. The way you're going to accept it, you know. It almost sounds like what I've had occasion to pray that when there's a situation, when there's a conflict, that if I'm wrong, Father, show me. Yeah. And if I'm right, handle it because I don't know what else to do. Yes, absolutely. That's another situation. Well, let's not forget what David's going through during this time. Now he's. This is a prayer that he has. But Saul and all that stuff was going on at this time up against him. And he had thousands of people against him. You know, excuse me. Yes, he had a small band of his cronies with him, I'll call them. Those that followed him and followed God. Loyal to him. Loyal to him and loyal to God. Mm -hmm. But there were so many others that were not. And we, can we not even say the same things happening today mm -hmm. when you see what's going on with the world and how they're behaving? You know, I mean, people are just doing terrible things to one another. Don't tell me it's in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
I don't care whether they say that or not. They're lying to themselves. So he says in verse 2, Let my sentence, hear the words, Let my sentence come forth from thy presence, not man's. In other words, if I'm going to be judged, let it be by you, not by man. You know, see, man at this point wanted to do away with uh, with David. Even Saul, who was the king of Israel at that point, wanted to do with, uh, have David put out of the picture. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. In other words, I'm going to trust your judgment, Lord. Now let, you, let, let your eyes see both sides of the argument, and I know you'll make the right decision. And just like what you were saying, well, I've said this too, <coughs> especially in my prayer to my father about teaching. Lord, I would rather die a terrible death, and I, he knows my heart, mm -hmm. than to teach one false doctrine mm. that someone would take and do, and it would be found guilty against them, which means I would be found guilty as well. And he and, and does that mean I am perfect? Absolutely not, and I'm not saying that. But I have prayed this prayed this prayer to my father and he knew my heart and he knew I was serious. And that I, I can understand David here, you know, you know, let everything be equal. Verse three says, Thou now here's here's the important thing. Thou hast proved mine heart. How did he prove David's heart? How does he prove anybody's heart? By testing. Testing to see what? Well, if we're studying God's Word, testing to see if you truly believe in that Word. Mm -hmm. Testing you and in, in, in how we conduct our, our daily lives out there. And we're tested from time to time to see if we truly believe in, in what, we're, what we believe in through Him. So David was tested. He was tested. Now, do we fail tests at times? Absolutely. But why is that so important to understand of when we fail? And I really think it's more important to be perfectly honest with you to learn from our failures. That's how we learn. That's how we learn with with um with power. In other words, that's how we learn It's proven. It's proven to you. You don't Not have any doubt after you make that mistake. You shouldn't have any doubt. Mm -hmm. See, there lies the problem with some people. That's what proof is. That, there sure. lies the problem. They're tested. They fail the test. And guess what? They stop right there. They don't want to go any farther. They say, well, this ain't for me. You know, some do. Many do. Or that you just keep doing it again. Exactly. You know, just what, what's, 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 that, what's that saying about history? Mm -hmm. Those that, are, that don't know history are doomed to repeat it. You know, and, and the Bible's full of history. <laughs> you know. But it says, Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Does God visit you in the night? I can assure you he does. Why does he do that? Why do you think he does that? That's the only time we're absolutely silent. <laughs> when we're shut up and listen. Mm -hmm. And we don't have a lot of other uh, Distraction. huh? Distraction. distractions going on in our lives. And he does. Sometimes you remember, sometimes you don't. But he does. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me. And shall find nothing. Think about what David's saying here. Lord, you've tested me. You've tried me, and you're not finding any fault with me right now. <laughs> okay, now, this mm -hmm. is his prayer. Mm -hmm. Now, you say, well, wait a minute now. Didn't David sin? Absolutely he had sinned. And he would sin even after this prayer. Not literally immediately after, but we know David's history and some of the things that he did that's written in the Bible. So, when he says... 
and shalt find nothing, can you say that? Maybe if you say it immediately after you repented of every sin you could ever think of. In well, that one moment. There are times. What if you do not remember? All right, since you bring that up. What if in your prayer and you're repenting, you don't remember a sin? Can you be forgiven of yes. it? Yes. So how are you forgiven of a sin like that? You ask God to forgive the ones that you've forgotten. In other words, you're up front with God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's the key. Yes. Isn't that the key? Yes. To be up front with God. You talk to him like he's a loving, understanding parent. Not somebody who's going to bite your head off. Because he is. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. You know, and, and the fact is, if we have sins in our life that we had long forgotten of, we know that sin cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we need to get rid of that sin, even if you don't remember it. But he does. It's all written down. In the book of life. Mm -hmm. But see, the, the key thing is, what's great about that book of life, it's written in pencil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why he said he couldn't find anything. <laughs> At that point. Yes. Because he had repented. Right. You know. That's why he says, I am proposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Purposed. Purposed. Uh, I am purposed. What does that mean, I am purposed? It's my intention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In other words, I don't want to sin. Well, don't we all say that? Do, I mean, do we go out every morning and say, well, what kind of sin can I do today? <laughs> no, I, I prayerfully pray that the Lord protect me, you know, and, and, and help me through this day. And, and we all have in our hearts that we don't want to be a sinner. Now, can you go through a day without sinning? And don't tell me you can't. Because you're a defeatist if you say that. A lot of times I sleep all day. <laughs> don't be facetious I understand what you're saying well yeah okay that's one I'm that's saying one. you're actually going out and doing things in life when, when, when you can't go through life yeah. with, uh, or through okay. that day without sinning when you keep God at the forefront of everything you can but there are those occasions where life comes up and smacks you in the face we're not, talking about, the we're not talking about those times that you're weak and sin. We're mm -hmm. talking about those times that you overcome mm -hmm. because your father is with you. And instead, see, that's the key thing that we got to learn is that the mindset. When, when, when we are weak, we are not thinking about the Lord. Now, when we're in weak moments, we may eventually turn to him. But how many times in life has something negative happened to us? And that we try this and try that and try this and try that and try this. And it seems like it just ain't getting, it ain't, working. it ain't working. Then all of a sudden we go, oh yeah, God, <laughs> Lord. In there. You know, and then we pray to him you, and, you, and, and things work out and you go, Lord, I'm sorry I didn't go to you first. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what our Lord wants. He wants to, see, when he says he comes and dwells with us, that means he's already here. And for us not going to him first, we're kind of rejecting that part of it, which is, should be the most important part of our lives. We're more, fo more focused on self or the world than we are. Well, I, I think that's what the way we're taught growing up. You know, pick yourself up. You don't mm -hmm. cry over this. Stand you know, on your own two feet. stand on your own two feet, and this and that and the other. You know, we're taught certain ways, right? But the thing is, our Father wants us. To rely on him. Now some people say, well that's 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 weak. Really? It's a crutch. It's a crutch. Mm -hmm. To rely on the most powerful person in creation is weak? No, you're weak for not understanding it is what it is. So David has learned this and he's learning. That's why it says, verse four, about man. Concerning the works of men. By the word of thy lips, he's saying, Lord, by your word, by your holy scriptures, I have kept me from the pass of the destroyer. Now, that's what it says in English, doesn't it? It didn't say that in manuscript. Hmm. Me from 
is in italics, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now let's read it without me from. I have kept the pass of the destroyer. Completely different meaning, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Now what does that mean? Well, who's the destroyer? Well, there's only one, the violent one. You call him devil, Satan, Antichrist, whatever. Now, what does he mean? I have kept the past of the destroyer. In other words, he sees them as he's as they're coming up in front of him before it smacks them in the face, mm -hmm. basically. But it also means something else deeper than that. What was David? Let me ask you another question. What was David kept from doing that he really wanted to do? Build the temple. Build the temple of God. And he really wanted to build the temple of God. But God himself says, you can't build it. Why? What was the reason he gave him? Remember? Because you're a man of war. Mm. Got blood on your hands. You say, well, wait a minute now. God was with him through all the Yes, he was, absolutely. But see, that's why he wanted Solomon to build it. Because Solomon wasn't going to be a man of war. He was a man of, of peace and wisdom. But he grew up with David as his father, you know, his earthly father. So when it says here, I have kept the past of the destroyer, doesn't mean that, that he was just such an evil, devilish person, but he had kept on the path of all this destruction. I mean, let's let's not forget. Not only David, but because of David, there was a lot of lives taken. You say, well, wait a minute now. Wasn't that directed by God? Yes, it was. But see, David realized who he was. Now, this is another important thing for especially a lot of veterans. Because there's a lot of veterans today that believe because they had killed people that God is against them. And that's not true at all. Because certain things had to happen in evidently their lifetime to allow us to sit here with the with the door unlocked and the shades open and be able to teach God's word mm -hmm. without being interfered with. Well guess what? You know what that took? Yes, it took the blood of Jesus, but it also took the blood of many lives who died for our freedom. Who fought. And died mm -hmm. for our freedom. Yeah. And David was one of them. Listen to verse 5. Hold up. Hold up my goings in thy paths. What does that mean, hold up? Hold up my goings in thy paths. Protect. Protect. Lead me. Guide me. Direct me. That my footsteps slip not. Lord, I don't want to fail. I want to go out here and I want to do what's right according to you. Not according to me. Not according to these yahoos out here. But according to you and your word. That's what I want to follow. Verse 6 says, I have called upon thee. And I got a simple question. Do you? You say, well, I call upon the Lord all the time. In what purpose? Is it for yourself to gain that day? Or is it for you to be able to lead, guide, and direct yourself to someone else to lead them to these true words? So it's, it's just, it's our path that we're on. And sometimes we're on the wrong path. Because, quite frankly, some of us, it's the way we've been taught. You know, we're dealing, we're dealing with a, uh, um, a church right now that is an evangelical church that we've come to, to, to uh, join up with. And evangelical churches are wonderful churches because they, accept, they teach people to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. However, when they go beyond that and they start what they call teaching, and it's not accurate teaching, there's a big problem. There's a big problem. Because our Father wants us to know it all. He wants us to know truth. Hmm? He wants 
<clears throat> wants everyone to know truth. That's why he says, I have foretold you all things. You know. So I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. David knows this. O oh God, incline thy ear unto me and hear my speech. Hear what I'm saying, Lord. No, even if I can't say it verbally, know what's in my heart. Here's a big one. Seven. Shoe or show thy marvelous loving kindness. How does our Father do that? In blessings. In blessings in our lives. Even in chastisement. Mm -hmm. Because he will chastise those he loves. Because he doesn't want you to fail. If you're heading down the wrong path of unrighteousness, he will intervene and put stumbling blocks in your way. Not because he hates you, but because he loves you and knows what's best for you, for his children. Just like any parent would. If you see a child getting ready to run out in the street, you're going to block that child from running out there, if you can. O thou that savest by thy right hand, that's your power. Them, which, hear this, put their trust in thee. From those that rise up against them. You see, this is a condition. A lot of people say well, the Lord doesn't have conditions. Yes, he does. There's a lot of them. And the condition is, look, I'll lead you, I will guide you, I will protect you, I'll be there for you every step of the way. However, you got to listen to what I tell you. Right? If you don't listen to me, guess what? I'll give you what you want. You don't want to live life without me? I'll give you that. Have the world. Have all of it. As much of it as you want. Because I know, our Father says, by living in the world, you're going to fail. You're going to have negative after negative after negative. You're going to be fighting fire after fire after fire. And it's so simple to just come to him. But a lot of people don't seem to get that. And some of them don't want it. No. They want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. They exactly. don't have to be told what to do. So that's why it says in verse 8, Keep me as the apple of the eye. What does that mean? What's the most sensitive part of your whole body? Your eye. Your pupil. That's the apple of your eye. When you, in, in life, I don't know if it, this ever happened to you, but you're, let's say, uh, you're not wearing glasses, or well, even if you are wearing glasses, something just comes straight for your eyelid, right, your eyeball. You're going to blink, you're going to move, you're going to, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a microsecond. You know, why? Because it's protection. Well, this is what David's praying for the Lord to protect him. You know, that, that, even if it's a microsecond of protection, that protection is needed. And he says, keep me that way. Keep, keep me in that emotion of, of, of protection. Under the shadow of thy wings. <coughs> Just like a, uh, an eagle. You ever hear about an eagle uh, raising its young? When it, uh, the young first gets ready, close to being able to fly, right on the verge the mother uh, eagle will get the, uh, the what's it called? The, uh, eaglet. eaglet on its wing and start flying and then the eaglet goes off or the mother will bow down a little bit and the eagle starts going down. Well, guess what? Eagle don't just, the little baby eaglet just, <laughs> doesn't start soaring. It's just flapping and jumping and it's going... And that mother eagle will come down, sweep under that little uh, eaglet. eaglet, and pick it up. Well, this is how our father is. You know, we he, he expects you to start going out there and doing and, and behaving a Christian life. But you know what? Because of the world and your your inadequacies at that point, being green at it, chances are going to fail. You know, and, and the world's going to look like it's going to chew you up. Well, he swoops in, and he'll grab you up by his hands. He'll lead you. He will guide you, and he will direct you through his word on how to do things and how to be protected, you know. 
It says, uh, keep me as the apple of the eye, hide me. That's uh, uh, under the shadow of thy wings, nine, from the wicked that oppress me. David said, hide me from them. You say, well, how, how can God hide you from the wicked? Remember Christ, when it was on a Sabbath day, and he went into the synagogue, as was customary for him to do, and they asked him to read from the book of Isaiah, I believe it was, and he started reading about basically his coming. And he says, you know, this has, I'm paraphrasing, but this has happened before your eyes today. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, they went ape on that. This, who's going to himself, God? And blasphemy. They, they blasphemy. And they wanted to kill him. I mean, they grabbed him, and they were going to take him outside and stone him to death. And remember what, what happened at that point? He walked right through them. Walked right through the midst of them, <laughs> where they couldn't see him. You say, well, how can that be? With God, all things mm -hmm. are possible. Remember Paul being in prison, mm -hmm. you know, being locked, chained up against a wall with guards on both sides of him. And the chains fell off, and he walked right out of that prison and right out the main gate. Yep. Now, did it say all the gates opened and everything? No, it didn't say that. He just All it says is that he walked out. And that was with, now, they weren't sleeping. Now, maybe those guards on each side of them were. But you see, the point being is when, when God wants you to do something and there's a negative in front of you and God wants it done, it's going to get done, providing your heart is right. Providing you want mm -hmm. to do what God wants. Now, that doesn't mean that you can't become fearful. David himself, as we'll see, becomes fearful at times. But with God... He's your protector. From the wicked, 9 says, From the wicked that oppress me, from my deadly enemies, who compass me about, they're all around me. He's saying, hide me from them, protect me, lead me, guide me, direct me. 10. They are enclosed in their own fat. Now what this basically means, their earthly prosperity. That's what it's talking about. With their mouth, they speak proudly, like their stuff don't stink. Eleven. They have now compassed us in our steps. They're all around us. Now remember, this is his prayer to our Father. They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth. Now when David was pursued by Saul, they compassed him. And... They bowing their eyes down, meaning being filled with fraudulence and hypocrisy. They were filled with all the negative and hate of the world. Just like it says in verse 12, like as a lion. You know what a lion does? A lion doesn't just eat its prey. A lion rips and tears its prey. Like as a lion that is greedy of his prey. And, as it were, a young lion. What does a young lion do? Well, same as the old one does, but listen. Lurking in secret places. What does that mean? He's talking about the wicked, right? Mm -hmm. How does the wicked operate? Well, they do it with concealment, do they not? They try They deception. try whatever they... Deception, fraudulent. You know, whatever, whatever works for them. Through you. You know. Um, just recently, and I'm sure this has happened to a lot of people, uh, I, I, I check my uh, bank account every day. Not because I want to know if I still have money. I check it for the other reason, which I found one day. There was a thing in there, and I won't say who it was from, and it deducted a penny. That's all they took out of, well, they tried to, it was pending, right? Yes. And I said, well, who are these people? You know, and it, it red flag went up instantly. Penny? Well, I called my bank. It's fraudulent. Yeah. It was just someone to see if I would transact. check it. The penny was That's the a non-issue. Mm -hmm. 
That's the test they do. They'll it's take a, a dollar test. They'll yeah, take a penny. absolutely. Will this penny go through? Well, if this penny goes through, guess right. what? I'm going to wipe them out. Right. Because the next next withdrawal would have been three thousand dollars or whatever they could have got. Take what they could, you know, and it, it, it's just a form of fraudulent. Mm -hmm. Well, this is how the enemy works. But another one that is very important to understand, having the key of David, is to understand how some false preachers will work. Just one little thing. Well, if they if they can say uh, you teach you, if they teach you as a child in their Sunday school mm -hmm. to uh, believe in uh, an that Eve ate an apple, just one little thing. Mm -hmm. Eve ate an apple and it caused her to sin mm -hmm. by a snake. Now, that story is told a thousand times on a Sunday. And the fact of the matter is, if you go into the Bible in the book of Genesis and look for the word apple, guess what you can't find? The word apple. It's not there. Now, I don't know about all these new Bibles out. Uh, maybe they threw it in there. But King James and previous, the word is not in the book of Genesis. Now, you say, well, okay, semantics. No. What that does, that plants a seed. Of deception because if you can believe that guess what you're going to start believing in all the other things that they're going to be teaching you about flyaway doctrine and Ishtar and, and all these other things and the any moment doctrine if now in other words if you cannot if 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 you believe in false doctrine at from the beginning you're going to be able to believe in false doctrine all the way to the end mm -hmm. Now, the other side of that coin is if you learn how to believe in truth and you learn the truth from the beginning, guess what? You're going to learn truth all the way to the end. And that's the key of David, part of it. To have the key of knowledge that only God can give you. And how do you get it? By asking Him for it. Asking the Holy Spirit. Asking our Father, say, Lord, you know, I hear what they're saying. But what do you say? He's and guess what he's going to do? He's going to lead you to the same word they're reading, but guess what? You're not reading and understanding what they're saying. You're reading and understanding what he's telling you in his word. And that's what you believe. And as long as you put your faith and your trust in the word of God, he will lead you, guide you, and direct you through all truth. But it's up to you. So on 12, I mean, he's speaking about the enemies. Mm -hmm. Right, and basically he's giving two examples of how the enemies or enemy can attack. Absolutely. One basically comes straight at you, get on. In one face, hides, and the other one hides. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sneaks. Yeah, and who's the great deceptor? Mm -hmm. Satan. And Christ. And who's coming first? Antichrist. The Antichrist comes first. Oh no 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 no! Jesus <laughs> comes first. Well, then you haven't read the Bible. Right. Six comes before seven. He comes at the sixth trump, six seal, and six vial. Christ doesn't come until the seventh. He said, where'd you get that? In the Bible. Yeah. It's written. Yeah. Many places. Reread Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Mm -hmm. Verse 13. Psalm 17, verse 13. Arise, O Lord. Boy, I'm running out of time. <laughs> Arise, O Lord. Disappoint him. Disappoint who? Mm -hmm. The enemy. This also, this disappoint means anticipate. It says in the manuscripts. Yep, it says anticipate. Anticipate the enemy. Well, the Lord will. But teach me how to anticipate the enemy. What is, what is basically David praying for? Godly discernment. Cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked. Which is thy sword, or thy word. 14. From men, which are thy hand. Now, it doesn't say which are in the manuscripts. It says, from men, th thy hand. Huh? Which are the italics in mine. I know. It was added later. Mm -hmm. 
O Lord, from, uh, he elaborates, from men of the world. Protect me from the men of the world, which have their portion in this life. They, they got their stuff. They got their spoils. You know, they've cheated uh, man, woman, and children out of all their stuff. And, and, and uh, they got their fat bellies going. And whose says belly? And whose belly thou fit, fillest with thy hid treasure? What does that mean? Earthly treasure. That's what they're filled with. What's earthly treasure today? Was back then, still is today. Gold and silver. No, they got tons of it. How'd they get it? Like being a lion. Deception. Deception. Hiding. Stealing. Fraud. fraud. They are full of children. You know what that means, full of children? This, this is among Eastern nations. And still to this day, the Eastern nations consider uh, a person blessed, and I don't mean godly blessings, but prosperous, by having a lot of kids. A lot of kids. They are full of children and leave the rest of their substance to their babes. In other words, yeah, they're prosperous. They got all this, but you know what? They ain't taking it with them. They ain't taking it with them. There's only one thing you can take with you to the kingdom of God, which is what? Works. One thing, huh? Your works. Works, either way. Mm -hmm. But preferably your good works. Mm -hmm. But your bad works can go with you, too, right? Written in the book of life. Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's why in the book of life it's written in pencil, because... God can erase some of those things that are negative, your sins. And guess what? Once he erases them before him, they don't exist anymore. You remember your sins. Why? So we don't repeat them. So hopefully we don't repeat them. As for me, verse 15 says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I will see you. I will, I will behold you when I, when I complete my race, when I'm doing what's right. I shall be satisfied when I awake with thy likeness. In, in other words, in mind and in spirit, when I have you first and foremost in my mind, I will wake refreshed, replenished, and, and, and what a blessing. I'm not done by any means. Got a, got, what, what time will we start? Quarter after? I think so. Psalm 18, it says to the chief musician, the Psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. So this is a preempt of, of when this song, when David put together this song, when all his enemies were defeated. And now let's not forget who Saul was. I mean, Saul was appointed by who? God. God. Yeah. Well, Samuel. Why? Samuel. Through the prophet. Yeah. yeah was, through Samuel, but it was through God. Yeah. God allowed Sa uh, Saul to to be king. Why? Because of man, and they're complaining about it all. Yeah. Instead of them, because up to that point, it was God. Who ruled over Israel? He used judges, didn't he? Yeah. Yes, he used judges to to bring to them. Well, hey, you're getting it wrong here. You need to go. You need to get back right with God. Mm -hmm. You need to turn from whatever direction negative they were doing. It was according to God's word. But it was according to our Father's word, and they were obeying that word up to a point. Well, then they started complaining. They wanted a man king like all the other nations of the world. And God himself, through Samuel, says, hey, you do this, this, that, and the other is going to happen to you. You know, your king is going to take this from you, your king is going to take... And what did our father only want for them at that point? And still does. Their love. Their love. The king will take your children, take your property. Take All your kinds money. of things. But say, oh, no, we want a man king. We want a man king. You know. <coughs> so what did God say? You want to live in the world? I'm going to give you the world. I'll give you soul. 
Mm -hmm. Here's Saul. There you go. And what did Saul do? You know, at first, oh, thank you, Lord, you know, I love you and you know, great things. But, man, he turned and he became prideful and, and this and that and the other. And he did exactly what the Lord said he was going to do. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that, at that point, we go through a, time, a period of all kinds of different kings throughout the ages. Some were good, some were bad, some were very good, some were very bad. You know. So this is David saying, look, this is where we're, now I'm, I'm, I'm becoming king, and I'm, I'm going to put you first, and you're get, uh, you, got, you got rid of all my enemies. That's why he says in verse 1, I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. David knew where his strength came from. Two, the Lord is my rock. I wish this rock was uppercase R. It isn't written here. But it should be. Because their rock is not our rock. It's a different place written. But uh, a difference between an uppercase R and a lowercase R. That means their God is not our God. You say, well, there's only one God. Uh, there's, there's the Lord Jesus Christ, and there's the Lord Antichrist. You say, well, what do you mean, Lord Antichrist? There's a lot of people believing in that Lord, and they're following him today. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. I've been through the fire. I've been through hell. I've been through the battles. I've overcome because of the Lord. My buckler. What is my buckler? One that keeps it together. And the horn being power of my salvation. And my high tower. What's a high tower used for? Especially back then. To see the enemy coming. Three. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from mine enemies. This is how I am saved from my enemies. Because I do trust him. And that's how you can be saved from your enemies today, if you trust him. And you can't lie through that. You know, he sees right through your lies. You can, I can, I don't care what you say and how many times you go to church or how many times you tithe or how many times you whatever. If your heart is not right, God will see right through it. Yeah. Four, the sorrows of death compassed me. It, it, I went through it. And the floods of ungodly men made me afraid. There was a point that David was afraid. I mean, think about it. He had, what, what was he, had 300 guys? Even prior to that, it was just him. And there are these thousands of people against him. You know. But what did our father say? If you're with me and I'm with you, you can, you can put 10,000 to flight. Not that you would do it, but he would do it through you. Verse 5, the sorrows of hell compass me about. That means surround me. The snares of death prevented me. You see, when you look through flesh eyes, you see sorrow and darkness. Just like seeing a cup, whether it's half full or half empty. You know, you, you see the stuff today, what's going on. And all the negative. You get on the you get on the news and what is it? Negative, 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 negative. Well, you can look at that or you can see between the lines and see God's work in everything. You know, you see all these people dying and being burned out and, and hurricanes and floods and and you can say, oh, how terrible or you can say, What an opportunity. Say, how in the world could you say that? Because I'm looking at it through God's eyes. He wants to get through to his children. And let's, let's, just, take, let's just take recently uh, the hurricane victims. Terrible destruction, right? I mean, there were certain sections that was flattened. I mean, it was a terrible, terrible hurricane. 
Now, you, you can look at it through flesh eyes and say, well, well they get what they deserve or, or it happens. You know, or you can look at it through God's eyes and say, look at all the opportunities that is there for God's children to help someone. You know, to be there. Even if it's only in prayer, and I don't mean that word only is a small thing, but, but to be there, spiritually speaking. Well, even to be an example <clears throat> for others that hear them that when they're praising God, that even though everything else is destroyed, there's lives are still been spared and some, they're giving God the credit. Exactly. Some people will say that, but most won't. Mm -hmm. Now, who do you think is following God? Who do you think is, is understanding things? I mean, they just, they both side, both, both people, let's say, both families lost everything. But one isn't devastated. The other is. I don't know how many times I've heard our families say, I just don't know what I'm going to do. And I don't mean to make light of that. I just don't know where I'm going to go. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't, who's going to help me? Well, God wants to help you. He said, well, why did God allow that? Well, you see, attitude. Mm -hmm. Right? Attitude. You know, somebody gets hurt in a car wreck and uh, an invalid or what. Why did God allow this to happen? Well, things happen. But it's your attitude in getting over certain things and giving praise to God no matter what happens in your life. Because I, I assure you, you give God credit and you praise Him, your life will be good. Your heart will be good. Even with the, with the trials and tribulations. Even with them all. In my distress, David says in verse 6, in my distress, I called upon the Lord. You see, when you look through God's eyes... You see salvation in light. And cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple. And my cry came before him, even into his ears. David knew that God heard him. Because what happened to David? God answered David. He helped him get through it all. Now... I wanted to continue here, but I think I'm going to stop because what we're getting ready to go into is something very important to understand. We're not only, what we're going to get into right here is really prophecy mm -hmm. from David. Because let's not forget, because of David and his heart with God, he was also, he became a prophet, which means he spoke of future events that would take place. But David is not just talking about uh, his time frame. He's also talking about the time frame of Moses. And he's also talking about our future time frame. So that's why I want to end here but the, but and pick this up next week because it, it's, it's really important. It's going to really get deep um, with understanding. But the important thing here is, is to understand why David had the heart of God. And how can you not read this and understand that the reason he had the heart of God is because he had that, that, that emotion in him that was so in tune to our Father. Again, it doesn't mean that he didn't make mistakes. But when he did, our father made sure somebody came by. If David didn't get it, he brought somebody by his path to say, Hey, what you're doing is wrong. He had the desire to please God. Even if it wasn't forefront in his mind all the time, he still had that desire. When well, it eventually became forefront mm -hmm. in his mind all the time. Mm -hmm. Especially as he got older and saw, or, um, uh, Solomon was getting ready to take over the reins. Uh, that's when he started writing down all these things. He had, when, when David's, there was a point towards uh, the end of David's life, everything that David spoke, there was somebody there to write it down. You know. Because 
he was a prophet at that point. And he had learned so much from our father. And father was using him. That's where we get the Psalms and, 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 and all these other works that we have. Uh, he worked through David just like he worked through the apostles. Just like he worked through the judges. Um, and how he will work through you if, A, you're listening, and B, you do what he tells you to do. And once you learn that, and once you start working at that, that's why it says, don't just hear my words, but do my words. Do what it says. And then when we do these things, we don't do them because you're trying to make brownie points. You do them because you truly love the Lord, and you know, you've learned through trial and error, you've learned that, hey, this is the best course for me. Because guess what? When I follow the Lord, I always win. I always win. I, in other words, I always overcome whatever adversity comes my way. And because of him, and that's why we give him all glory, honor, and praise. Because he's the one that allowed that to happen. All right, we'll end here today. Are there any questions of what we covered so far? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity of today. We thank you for your word that you have shared with us, and you lead us, you guide us, and direct us, Father, through the reading and, most importantly, the understanding of thy word. That is most precious to us. But now it is up to us, when given an opportunity, to share that truth with someone else. And we thank you also for those upcoming opportunities. I pray for everyone here today and their families and all those on YouTube and their families that you watch over us, that you lead us, guide us, and direct us. And forevermore, we will give you all glory, honor, and praise. For we do love you with all our hearts, with all our minds, with all our strengths, and with all our souls. For it is in Yahshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory.